Welcome to another round of my little guitar demo series. Today I don't want to show you a guitar, I do that anyway. Uh, While well, this is my bread and butter uh, Fender Stratocaster, it's in uh, yeah, some, somewhere in 2003 uh, Fender American Stratocaster HSS uh, with a humbucker, but um, <clears throat> this doesn't play a big role here in what I'm doing today because uh, some time ago I did a video for um, volume and tone control on a Gibson Les Paul and um, meanwhile many folks uh, complained uh, that of course it can't be compared with the wiring and the behavior of a Fender Stratocaster so I thought upon public request I do a short addendum video showing you the principles of volume and tone control on a Fender Stratocaster or any Stratocaster for that matter because the, the standard wiring is everywhere the same. You have one volume and two tone controls, uh, most of the time a five-way switch. This isn't even too important. The most important thing we want to concentrate on today uh, are the knobs. So on a Gibson Les Paul and many other guitars you have uh, two separate volume knobs. Uh, this isn't the case on a Fender Stratocaster, you have only the one. And of course this makes it a little bit more difficult to um, accomplish the, the possible combinations and the fast switching possibilities of a Gibson Les Paul. Um, I don't want to make it too complicated, I just want to show you some very important principles. Um, and when I'm going around in the internet or on live stages, uh, I come across uh, very often uh, guitar players who yeah, seem not to know that they have a volume knob. They know that they have tone knobs, but the volume knob is always on 10, fully up, fully cranked up. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> this is a possible way to play guitar, but a Fender Stratocaster offers so many nuances in the tone and this is controlled via the volume knob and not via the tone knobs. The tone knobs play an important role but the volume knob is the, the secret. I also see many guitar players with huge pedal boards and everything, uh, phaser for that, chorus for that, so I'm, I'm a delay addict, I understand that, I always play with delay, but uh, they also have overdrives and fuzzes and, 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 and gain booster and yeah many stuff which can be very useful. Um, however, <clears throat> just imagine you only have your, your guitar and you have an amplifier which may not even be your own. Assume that you have no channel switching possibility for example during your live uh, jam on an open stage or in the rehearsal room with some of your friends where you don't have your own amp uh, with you and uh, then you have this amp you, you can switch over and uh, it has this sound. Of course you can turn on the amplifier to get rid of the distortion or yeah, fine adjust the tone and everything. But what I'm doing is, listen to that. I achieve the same without uh, using a stomp box or changing the channel on an amplifier, I do that by turning one knob and that's the volume knob on the guitar. Often forgotten. So again. Interesting, isn't it? You have all the dynamics in your hands and in the volume knob of your guitar. You can do everything you want, achieve simply a good tone. It may not be the perfect tone for your purpose, but at least you have a chance to switch between, for example, clean, crunch and high gain distortion by using just one amplifier setting. Uh, look here in the detail, I, I use a uh, yeah, modern, uh, using Kettner Tube Meister 36 tube amplifier. It's very important that it is a tube amplifier. Uh, my method won't work too well with um, hybrid or um, solid state amplifiers and also will not work with modeling uh, amplifiers. <clears throat> yeah, reason is they are digital 
uh, they are sort of computers, you know, and the behavior is simply totally different from, from a tube, from, from a real analog tube amplifier. So, as you can see here in the detail, I simply have set every knob, except of the master volume, so every knob from, uh, from the EQ and from the gain, using the crunch channel here to 12 o'clock position. This is what I'm doing. And the rest I'm doing with this knob. Two important principles in advance. If you use a crunch channel of an amplifier with a Fender Stratocaster, you will experience that when you roll off the volume, your high frequencies um, will vanish. So it, it, it will, uh, the tone will uh, be darker than expected. <clears throat> this you have to know in advance. This is one thing. The second thing is, you can't expect that when you have a crunch channel and you go, for example, on volume two and do this, there's no crunch to hear. And the reason is simple. Uh, when I'm coming down with the volume, I also have to come down with my right hand in the dynamics. So I have to adapt my hand and my attack and the way I play to the volume setting. I'm using here my volume go to 2.5. Don't hit the strings too hard. Could really anybody distinguish that I, 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 I play this on a crunch channel and not on a clean channel? Not really. Of course, if I would use a, a dedicated clean channel of an amplifier, I would get more sparkling heights and uh, yeah, all we guitar players like. But this isn't too shabby and uh, it's no reason to, to put the guitar away so I can play with everybody with this sound. Also when I use other pickup positions. You hear the delay, that's my delay. I like it. Um, but you also heard, uh, yeah, sounds funky, there is no distortion at all. But when I come higher with the volume, let's say 3 or even 3.5, it starts to become a little bit dirty and also the higher frequencies become more prominent. So the range between 1 and 3.5 uh, using a crunch channel with 12 o'clock position uh, and the volume uh, of your guitar, there, there you have to yeah, fine adjust and find the sweet spot with, which is good for you. And then you have to practice this a little bit uh, to do the quick roll off and don't over roll. You know, you don't want to have it too low in volume or you don't want to have it crunchy. So this is a matter of time. You need time to, to use this, uh, find your sound, and over time, not in days, not in weeks, but in months' time, you will uh, realize what, what you've been missing. Because I can tell straight away when I'm playing a Stratocaster, it's different from Les Paul models. When I play a Stratocaster, I yeah, very seldom use the position 10 on the volume, on either channel. If I'm in the clean, in the crunch or in the high gain section, I rarely use the 10. I don't know why that is, it's a personal preference or something, but um, it's different. The dynamics of the guitar are different and yeah, I encourage you, play around with your knobs and find the, the interesting nuances in between. And of course, when you then play around a little bit with the, with the tone knobs, uh, yeah, you, you have a, 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 a rainbow full of uh, variations, of tonal variations at your disposal in your hands. And then, of course, it makes a great difference uh, if you play with your hands, your plain hands, your fingers, or use a pick like this. Because when you use a pick, you will experience that when you are not controlling your attack um, that you will hardly find the, the clean spot in the crunch channel by rolling off the wall. And like I said here, it's position point 2.5. somewhat nice but I wanted to have a
clean sound and this isn't clean it's crunched so what am I doing I reduce the attack <laughs> The other method is not using a pick, just use your fingers for strumming. You immediately hear I have more dynamics available with my plain hands than with a pick. But there are guitar players who always play with a pick. This, I'm just telling, you have more possibilities. change something on the volume, I, I, I erased the dynamics and it hardly started to crunch, but it was the same loudness uh, in my ears than the same done with a pick, but having the crunch. But before I babble too much, <clears throat> let me show you uh, what a nice intro would be. So I start with a clean sound and then end up with a non-clean non sound and I control this only with the volume knob. The tone knobs are both fully cranked open. dynamic range isn't it from total clean from nice clean to heavy crunch distortion and I didn't stomp on any stomp box I didn't stomp on any channel changer or something like that I simply turned my volume on the guitar I've prepared a little playback and we'll play along with the guitar here playing mostly lead and what I will do is I will do my best to create various tones just by fiddling around here with the knobs. And of course I also will change from using a pick to only my fingers and um, try to understand while I'm playing it and while you're listening to the sonic result uh, how you can achieve this. This is done by the proper combination between attack control and volume control. Not so much the tone control, in between I also will use the tone control a little bit, but uh, it doesn't do too much for my purpose here. It just offers more tonal uh, variability for you. So, have fun! <laughs>
that's how it is when you change the volume on your guitar and use just one channel on your amplifier, crunch, 12 o'clock position every note, except of the master volume, adjust that according to your neighbors. <laughs> However, I have to say um, that the amplifier needs to be tickled a little bit to unfold enough dynamics for you and um, yeah, maybe a little bit too much for your uh, uh, living room or something like that. Anyway, uh, I hope this video was useful for you and you feel a little bit inspired today playing your Fender Stratocaster or any other Stratocaster for that matter. Have fun with it. Bye bye. See you next time.